I've always loved New York. And I've been here many times at Christmas, walking up and down the streets and looking at the lights like any fella from the country would, and smelling the roasting of the chestnuts. In 1957, we held a crusade in Madison Square Garden for 16 weeks, every night. We only had empty seats on one night, and that was the second night. Now, for the last three years, We've been going throughout New York State and have been having week-long meetings in Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Albany, Hamilton, the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island a year ago, and earlier this month in the Meadowlands across the Hudson in New Jersey. Here is Central Park, it's an 840-acre beauty spot in the middle of Manhattan, which is an island. Manhattan is an island, two miles wide and 13 miles long. If you try to walk it, it seems 10 times that far. And if you go by taxi, you can be there in a minute or two. <laughs> for the seven and a half million people for whom New York is home, one third today are immigrants who were born in another country, and another third are second generation Americans. And we Americans have long been proud of the fact that we're the melting pot of the world, and New York is the melting pot of America. New Yorkers, have erected the most magnificent skyline of skyscrapers in the history of man. It boggles the imagination. New York's wealth and splendor has attracted many of the world's cultural giants, as well as producing some of the former scientists, philosophers, poets, artists, and musicians. Three quarters of all the books that are published in America are published here in New York. And New York sets the fashion for the nation. It is certainly the entertainment capital of the world. But with all of this overload of vitality and variety being played out by the pace setters of world society who have clawed and climbed their way to the top of the heap, New York City is a place in desperate spiritual need. It's no, it's no secret that in New York during the last 30 years there's been a tragic exodus from the churches into materialism, secularism, and humanism. When we were here 37 years ago, the Judeo-Christian value system provided the standard by which more lives were lived. Many were out of bounds, but they knew where the boundaries were. Today, the boundaries of what is right and wrong have been blurred and erased, and they need to be returned, and it can only be returned in a spiritual awakening and revival. New Yorkers are paying a terrible price for getting away from God. Psychiatrists are almost unanimous that New Yorkers in the 1990s are the world's most stressed people anywhere. And you're also the most lonely people in all the world. You're also called the welfare capital of the world. All you have to do is read Pete Hamill's story this past Thursday. It's sickening, discouraging, and tragic. God loves New York, and he has not given up on this city because he does not give up on people. As big and grand as New York buildings are, they are not New York. As wide and famous as New York City avenues are, they are not New York. As great as the plays and musicals and art and concerts are, they are not New York. New Yorkers are what make up New York. New York is a place where people live and it's the people that God is interested in. There is a better way. There is a way out of all this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's why today I'm going to speak on John 3.16 in a few minutes. Yes, you, 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 there was a great spiritual awakening here in this city that began here, September 23rd, 1857, the Fulton Street prayer meeting. First 30 minutes of that, nobody came to the prayer meeting. Then six people came. A week later, at a second meeting, 20 came. A third week 40 came then it started holding meetings daily of 6,000 and then it spread across America until millions of people joined the churches and it began right here in New York in a prayer meeting Brooklyn used to be known as the city of churches but now many are used as bars and bowling alleys the records through the years are that we have left God and we need to return to God 